All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakak Wadash. I want to say double honors to the apostles and the bishop elders at Great Millstone for teaching us this word in truth and sincerity and for reading well. And salutations to my fellow Akim across the four corners of the globe, preaching and prophesying in the name of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. And I'm my brother Gabar Yahweh Duff from GMS Hawaii, coming to you with another quick lesson. And this one is a video that you see right here in front of you. It, is in, it was put up by the brother. I don't know his name, so if this brother sees this lesson, I, I you know, hope that he, you know, he posts the comment, posts his name, but his page is Endure These Last Days to Ba, all right? And the title of this lesson was entitled, um, The Bible Wasn't a Mistake, You Just Don't Know Shit. And that's true. You know, uh, Jake, they don't know shit. You know, especially you niggas that have been locked up for a thousand years, and you beat the charge, you come home, you come home with that bullshit knowledge that jailhouse knowledge and his truth is not jailhouse knowledge okay the word of yahweh shai is not something that some guy in a prison house contrived out of his own mind to get people to follow him no the truth this word came from yahweh shai and it's truth all right everything that's written in the bible the bible is the only book on the planet earth that gives us the understanding of why we are in the condition today. When I say we, I'm talking about the so-called, from the so-called Negro to the so-called Latino, Native American, West Indian, Haitian, Latino, okay? As a, as a group of people, which we truly are the nation of Israel, right? And one big, one big issue that Jake has is the fact that we had to endure captivity, slavery, okay, if you will, all right? And you got to understand that slavery was a punishment for our iniquities and our trespasses against Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and those iniquities and trespasses were many and the Lord told us this is going to happen before it even happened over 2,000 years ago well over 2,000 years ago shit almost like 3,000 years keep it up being you know and, and he did it through Moses all right he told us that hey if you follow my laws set your commandments you're going to do this if you don't you're going to uh, you're going to suffer all right and jake doesn't understand it and but you're still living in your iniquity and you wonder why you still suffer all right this is the book of romans chapter 11 verse 1 the book of romans 11 and 1 because jake is simple-minded you know and they believe that their unbelief is is going to be is going to triumph over the belief in the, of the lord and it's not it's, your unbelief is not going to triumph over the truth all right your your jailhouse knowledge is not going to triumph over the truth. Here it is, a nigga that done sold drugs to his people, done committed all kinds of murder and theft and witch and warlock shit. Now he went, he gets to sit on the couch and talk about the good old days. And then he, his first attack is the Bible. He, you don't, you don't come at the so-called white man. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you're not, you're not as fervent against Esau Edom as you are against Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shai. And that shows you that hey, these you so-called Negroes, Latino, Native Americans. You're Israelites, man, because you got such a rebellious spirit. This is the book of uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Israel is not cast away, and we're not, all right? It says, I say then, have the Most High cast away his people? The Heavenly Father forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. It says, verse 2, the Most High have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Woe ye not what the scripture saith of Elias which that's the, the book of Elijah. I mean, that was Elijah, the prophet. Um, Elias, I'm sorry, Isaiah. I think that's Isaiah. But it's Elias. It says how he, no, it was Elias. It was Elijah. He says how he maketh intercession to the Mosa against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. Right. And he, these, this guy right here is the type of nigga that sought the, the life of the prophets, man, from Elijah to Jeremiah, to all of us, man, you know, a niggas like this and with this mentality, right? And so here it is, Elijah was speaking against Israel because these niggas are crazy. Isn't it? The Lord said, they have killed, uh, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am uh, left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of the heavenly father of the Most High unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have now bowed a knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant 
according to the election of grace, right? And not every nigga you see, not every so-called Negro, Latino, Native American, starting with the man, you see is, is, is part of the elect. There's a remnant, you know, just like it was during the time of Elijah. He didn't see those brothers, but the Lord had a, he had a, a, a complete number of prophets that weren't murdered and killed by the hands of Jake, you know? But I want to go up here back to verse 2 and read that in the NLT. Verse 2 says in the NLT, no, the Most High has not rejected his own people like you Christians believe. You know, that Christianity that, that you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans believe in today, that's nothing more than plantation Christianity. You know, starting with the creation of the Negro Bible. All right. Which they took over 90 plus percent of, out of it. That's what they were teaching Jake during captivity. And, and when they were, when they so-called was teaching Jake the Bible to read. You know, trying to give because a lot of those, uh, a lot of those uh, slave plantation owners were, were missionaries, were so-called Christians themselves, man. While they were putting hell on a nation, which the nation of Israel they were putting hell on, they were trying to uh, pros proselytize, I think it was proselytize, and trying to uh, missionize them Jakes, man, into their form of Christianity, which is nothing more than Edomite supremacy to worship the so-called white man, starting with that image of the white Christ. That's not biblical, right? And being hypocrites at the same time. Here it is. They feed. They 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 call themselves staunch believers of the Bible, but where were they feeding Jake? Pork. You know they gave you Sunday worship, which goes back to sun worship, because the vast majority, if not all of them, plantation owners were nothing more but uh, witches and warlocks anyway, masons, uh, 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 satanists, you know. But then you get a nigga like this, a beast like this, that says the Bible was the biggest mistake in human history. How, Sway? How? How was it a mistake? I won't let the dude explain, but I want to go back to this. It says, no, God has not rejected his own people, whom he chose from the very beginning, right? The Lord chose the Israelites from the very beginning out of all, over all nations, and chiefly the elect out, out of Israel. Do you realize what the scriptures say about this? Elijah the prophet complained to God about the people of Israel and said, it said, uh, uh, verse three, <clears throat> and said, and said, uh, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left. And now they are trying to kill me too. And, okay. And that wasn't the white man doing Jake in. That was Jake doing Jake in. You know, see, Jake think that like you try to romanticize Africa. You want to romanticize uh, uh, um, uh, slavery, you know, and a brutality. But you don't understand the reason why it happened. See, that was the biggest cause. Because you look at the so-called white man today, you know, he and she, they're not superior. They're not superior in mind, body or spirit. So you got to ask yourself, how the hell did these people come up over us? Here it is. We're the strongest out of all nations. All right. You know, we, we they, they, they use your strength to work you like an ox. They, you, they took your land. They enslaved you. They murdered you. They raped you. They robbed you. They impersonated you. How did the hell that happen? Well, it was the judgment of the Lord. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 25. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the Most High. For thine enemy have persecuted thee, but surely thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. Right? Esau is our enemy. But who 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 brought this wrath upon us, man? The Most High. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh brought this wrath upon us. And it was always written in the scriptures. We just had to have a spirit to see it. And not every Israelite has a spirit to, to see and know and witness and understand this truth. What would you say was the biggest mistake in history, either our mistake or just a just the mistake of the human race in history, would you say? The biggest mistake. And that's another thing too, because was when it was Slocky. That's another thing too. All this talk about the human race. There's no human race. All right. There's nations of people. That human race shit, that's some bullshit that Esau contrived and came up with. All right, because if it was a human race, don't you think all humans would be on a on a high level? No, don't you think all humans, if we were all the same people, do you don't you think we we should all be living 
like certain people on this earth, namely the Edomites, the chief Edomites. So we're not all, there's no human race. There's just the nations of people. There's a chief nation, which is the nation of Israel, which whom we are. And there's a base nation, which is the so-called white man. You call them, you call them the so-called white man. The Bible calls them the Edomites. All right. And then in, in the middle of all of that, you have the sons of men. Slavery. Slavery. Hey. History, would you say? The biggest thing just the history of either our mistake or just a just the mistake of the human race in history, would you say? The biggest mistake was when it was slavery. Yeah, and then see that they can say the biggest mistake is when it was slavery. No, slavery is sanctioned by the Heavenly Father in the Bible. It is. But the way Esau put us in, in captivity. That that his the way he took it above and beyond. That's that's not the way that you uh, execute slavery on a nation. There's a biblical way that you do it. Slavery is permissible in the Bible, but the way that we went into slavery is not permissible. When you look at the book of Exodus, slack it. The book of Exodus. When I think it's Exodus, it might be Deuteronomy. Just bear with me. Um, let me see rigor. Right. You're not supposed to rule over the children of Israel with, in, with rigor. So I can. The book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 38. And I'll go through it real quick. It says, I am the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Shai, your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. And we know that this is the Israelites who did this too. If thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, our brothers are the Israelite, our fellow Israelite brother, man, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant. And that's what Esau did to us. He made us serve as a bond servant, a base, a slave. That, that term for bond servant. And Jake was doing this shit to each other too. So that that's why it definitely crept, it, it, it took us over so hard all throughout the middle ages and even back in the ancient time uh that word for a bond servant is slave a man servant all right so we an israelite is not supposed to serve under another israelite as a slave as a bond servant that's what we and that's what we were in america and we still under bonds right so it says if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxing poor he uh and be sold unto thee thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant in the NLT, it says, if one of your fellow Israelites falls into poverty and is forced to sell himself to you, do not treat him as a slave. It says, but as an hired servant and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee, which I think that was like every seven years, right? So it says, treat him instead as a hired worker. So he got paid. He wasn't working for free. You couldn't, you couldn't, um, you couldn't extend his 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 work as a uh, um um past a certain point, right? You couldn't do that because that was that was wicked, and according to the law of the heavenly Father, it was illegal. Okay, so it says treat him instead as a hired worker or as a temporary resident, right? Uh, it says who lives with you, and he will serve you only until the year of jubilee, right? So we, you wasn't beating them. You wasn't depriving them of no food and clothing. You wasn't raping them. You wasn't um um raping his children. You wasn't raping his wife. You wasn't doing no wicked shit like that. You wasn't cutting his foot off if he tried to run away. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what Esau did to us and then a whole lot more. It says, and then shall he depart, verse, um, verse 41, and then shall he depart, this is after the year of Jubilee, uh, from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family, and unto the possessions of his father shall he return. For they are my servants, right? We, the Israelites, we're the servants of Yahweh Bashar Shai, starting off with the man, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but shalt fear thy power, right? So if an Israelite is put into captivity, you ain't supposed to rule over him with rigor. But Esau, he did that. Which was ultimately our judgment from the Lord, but he did that. 
all right? That word, it says harshly, it says, thou shalt not rule uh, uh, in the NLT. Show, show your fear of the Most High by not treating them harshly. And that shows you that Esau didn't have any fear when he put us in slavery. He didn't have no fear of the Most High. He didn't think about when he when he when he robbed and raped and enslaved because the Northern Kingdom were enslaved too here in Americas. He and he murdered them. He did everything under the sun to us and then some, right? He did that because he didn't fear Yahweh was shot. All he could think about was his hatred and his lust. That's all he thought about and that's all he cared about. Verse 25, verse 45, uh, uh, Leviticus 25 and 45. Moreover, the children of the children of strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they beget in your land, and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance. I'm sorry, let me read that again. Salakia, let me, Salakia, I skipped, I skipped the verse. Uh, this is Leviticus 25 and 43. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, which with harshness, but shalt fear thy God. That's right. This is the Israelite man. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, so that slave men and slave women, the people that you can rule over with harshness, both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen, which are you other nations, including the nation of Esau, that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, the children of strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they beget in your land, and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you. Like Esau would sell us to, well, he would, we would become the inheritance of Esau's children. Once that Edomite, particularly Edomite slave master died, we will be given to his sons or daughters. And it would just pass us down. But you're not supposed to do that to an Israelite. That can only be done to a heathen nation, not to the Israelites. So that's another reason why Esau is going to pay. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. So these heathen nations are supposed to be our bondmen and bondwomen forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor, with harshness, man. You see? But Esau, he took it to the next level. And it was ultimately the wrath of the Lord. That's what that happened to us. It says, passing them on to your... I'm just it. It says um, in the NLT, verse 45, Leviticus 25 and 45, you may also purchase the children of temporary residents who live among you, including those who have been born in your land. And you may treat them as your property. Yeah. Yeah, and which is you nations, man. Because you nations never, you're not, they, these nations weren't set up to be around us permanently. Either they was dealing with us in business or they were serving us temporarily. But now the Lord's like, nah. You, and, I mean, back then in the law, it says what? No, they're going to be your, they're going to be your possessions forever. Them you can put into slavery. Them you can treat as bondmen. All right? Verse 44 in the NLT. It says, however, you may purchase male and female slaves from among among the nations around you. Right. But you can't buy and sell no Israelite. You ain't supposed to do that. But so that shows you that slavery is permissible. All right. It's just the way Esau did it to us, it was it was it was incomprehensible. All right. Um, um it's the book of uh Zechariah 1 and 15. Zechariah 1 and 15. See, Jake got a bad taste in his mouth about slavery because of what happened to Jake. Salaki. Got a bad taste in his mouth about slavery because we experienced one of the harshest forms of slavery. Just like when the Martazarium Knights, so-called Egyptians, did us and you Edomites did us worse. But this is Zechariah 1 and 15. It says, uh, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, for I was but a little displeased and they helped forward the affliction. That's right. You you nations, you helped forward our affliction. You went above and beyond. It says, but I am very angry with the other nations that are now enjoying peace and security. I was also, I was only a little angry with my people, but the nations inflicted harm on them far beyond my intentions. And then you can look at that because 
the, the, the wickedness that Jake, I mean, the wickedness that Esau was doing to Jake and forcing Jake into, that's not something that the Lord uh, uh, shines on because he's not wicked. You Edomites, you just took it to another level. So again, Jake got a bad taste about slavery because he doesn't have a ruling class mentality. He doesn't even realize that he's still a slave. All right, just because Esau ain't beating your bet, <laughs> hey, you went to his prison house and now you in this open air prison called the country, nigga. All right, you, you walking around here imitating Esau with the fake, with the, uh, I mean, with the fake, with the uh, shaved face, your, your body all tattooed up, plus the nigga is all excited about how he beat a life, serving a life sentence in prison, but he's free now. But you go to these niggas for advice. Somebody says, I will always stand on the word. The word of God says that Ma will be accountable. I don't know what Ma is. But black people were enslaving no, people no. back in uh, Egypt. No, it wasn't black people. First of all, we're not black, and neither are the Egyptians. We're, we're different variations of brown. Yes, slavery has happened, but that's not the excuse for what you, you Edomites have done to the children of Israel and these other nations did to us. Do you not understand who we are? The Lord said what in uh, I think it's Zechariah 2. It says what? He that touches you, touches the apple of the Lord's eye. Yep. Uh, Zechariah 2 and 8. For thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashanah was shot host. After the glory have he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you, touches the apple of his eye. Right? We, you touched the wrong people. After a period of glory, the Lord of heavens and armies sent me against the nations who plundered you. For he said, anyone who harms you harms my most precious possession, man. And that's what we are. You jakes in a low estate. We're in this low estate. You can't see yourself as a precious possession. You know, you talk all this king and queen shit. You, you, you talk about royalty like as if you know it and understand it. But you don't know that we're the most precious possession that the Lord has over any piece of land, over any over any uh, uh, animal in the field, over any flower in the field, the Lord looks at us as his precious possession. Over any precious metal, he looks at his people as a pre precious possession. And that's what you Edomites harmed us. You know? What I'm saying, but they was given what? The Bible. Oh, yeah. The softening of them. The Bible. Uh, Egypt. That's what I'm saying. But black people were enslaving no, people no. back in uh, Egypt. That's what I'm saying. But they was given what? The Bible. Oh, yeah. The soften them. Yeah. To make think somebody's coming back to save them. You see, and Jake don't believe in a savior. These niggas, these two-third niggas, they don't believe in a savior because Esau don't believe in a savior. And these are non-believers, man. The Bible didn't soften Jake up. Okay, it was a blessing that the Lord even allowed us to even hear the word of the Lord after what we did. How about that? It's just that the, the version you heard was an Edomite version. It was highly redacted. It was highly um it was highly uh um edited, the version that you got. Because the mer and, and that's the same, y'all ain't even read the Negro Bible, but guess what? You Jake still got that Negro Bible plantation Christianity mentality. All right. The select parts of the Holy Bible for the use of the Negro slaves in the British West Indies, Indian Islands. Select parts of the Holy Bible for the use of the Negro slave. This is the Negro Bible. And I actually have a copy of it, too. And it says, uh, in the British West Indies Islands, sometimes referred to as a slave Bible, is an abbreviated version of the Bible specifically made for teaching a pro-slavery version of Christianity to enslaved people in the British Isles. It was, a, it was produced in England in the early 19th century for the use of the British West Indies. It had all references to freedom and escape from slavery uh, excised, while, while passages encouraging obedience and submission were emphasized. These references emphasizing loyalty and submission to the slave masters were instructions handed down by Bellaby Portis, an Edomite. Look at this, the devil. It's the devil, right? Then Bishop of London who stated, prepare a short form of public prayer together with the select portions of the scriptures, particularly those which relate to the slave duties toward the master. 
British missionaries used it in the education and conversion of enslaved populations. The editors included only 10% of the Old Testament and half of the New Testament. For example, among the excluded passages, Galatians 3 and 28, which these Christians, they love to lean on that, right? You, you, you Christians love to lean on Galatians 3, 3 and 28 like you understand that. It says, which state there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for, for ye are all one in Hamashiach the Hawashat. Exodus 21 and 16, Deuteronomy 23, 16 through 17 were also removed. The publishers of the slave Bible thought these sections such as Exodus, the book of Psalms, and the book of Revelation could, could instill a slave in a slave a dangerous hope for freedom and dreams of equality. And that's that's why you Jakes are in this plantation mindset and as, as referring to Christianity to this day. You ain't got no hope. They don't want you to have no salvation. And this nigga is a, is a prime product of that. You know, he don't believe that Yahweh Shah is coming back to save us, man. This nigga, his savior is the white man. Even though he act like he's talking against him, his savior is the white man and money. Salakia. Yeah, this nigga, this nigga's, this nigga's savior is the white man and his money and his system, right? He don't want you to believe in the savior because he's a nigga's a non-believer. All right, this is the book of Second Edris, chapter 15, verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, save the Lord. And the fact that Yahweh Bashan was shy, Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh is sending back Yahweh Shai to save the elect of the nation of Israel. Guess what? That's a prophecy. So us believing in the Savior and, a, and salvation, that's a prophecy. We speaking that into your ears, whether you hear it or not. Or, or, or believe it or not, believe it or not, whether you hear it or not, behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause on them to be written in paper, for they are what? Faithful and true. Yep. Fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Yep. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. You see? So all you jakes that don't believe, guess what? You're going to die in your unbelief, man. A horrible, grievous death, nigga. And in the end, you're going to believe in the Bible because when all hell breaks loose, you niggas run, run, try to run to the Lord like, like, you, like you always had a relationship with him. Okay, you the first ones to run. Call on the Lord. Oh, God, oh, God. Well, you think you call on the Lord. Oh, God, oh, Jesus. All this other weirdo shit, man. But you ain't seek the Lord when you had a chance. And when you did, what you do, you you openly rebelled. Okay, you openly rebelled against the Lord because you didn't care. This is the uh, second address, chapter 15, in the, in the GNT, the Good News Translation. It says, the Lord says, proclaim to my people, come on, man, proclaim, proclaim to my people the prophetic messages that I will give you. And then have them written down. This is the Bible. Because they are all, they are, because they are true and will be fulfilled. Do not be afraid of those who plot against you or be disrupted by their unbelief. All unbelievers will die because of their unbelief. Right. So when Jake is getting put down, they're going to be wondering why is this happening to them? Because of your unbelief. And, and you, you proclaimed that you said the Bible was the biggest mistake. In human history, all the shit that Esau has done in this world, and you could and you you come at the Bible because you niggas hate the Lord. <laughs> That's why King David said, Don't I hate them who hate thee? <laughs> I hate them with a perfect hatred, man. You know, this is why two thirds of you niggas and niggas gotta go. And when I say that, I'm talking about that includes all the tribes, man. From the so-called Negro all the way down to the so-called Latino, man. To make things somebody the Bible. Oh yeah. To the soften them. Yeah. To make things somebody's coming back to save them. The first thing when they would go up into the mother big house, they want to read the Bible. Can you teach me how to read the Bible? Well, you, you don't understand that at one point in this world, in this in this country and around the world, the Bible was the chief point of knowledge. You didn't have colleges 
And those colleges were that were established, guess what they were? They were Bible schools. Most of these schools, most of these colleges, Yale, Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, they started off as um uh, uh schools of, of 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 schools of theology of the Bible. All right? And Jake wasn't asking Esau to teach him to read because it was illegal to teach a slave to read, man. And it, it was it was by death if you got caught reading the Bible. And 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 then sometimes slave masters and mistresses were 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 um, um um reprimanded for teaching their slaves to read. But it wasn't like it, it wasn't no Bible cops. It wasn't no reading cops out there. It says fearing. I saw. I typed in. Was it illegal for slaves to read? It says fearing that black literacy would prove a threat to the slave system, which relied on slaves' dependence on masters. This is the reason why you have plantation Christianity, because they wanted you to be dependent on them, not Yahweh Bashir and Shah. Whites in many colonies instituted laws forbidding slaves to learn to read or write, and making it a making it a crime. For others to teach them. You see? So it was a crime. And it and it was all because they wanted to keep you in slavery. So you niggas, it wasn't nobody running to the white man asking him, please teach me how to read. You had some that that taught, but then what happened? They were super slave niggas. And they became the guys that um 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 they became your preachers. It's a lot. Yeah, they became your preachers, your modern day preachers and pastors. All right, let me play this real quick. Inside Washington's Museum of the Bible, a single volume that is like no other, the so-called Slave Bible, remarkable not for what's in it, but for what's not. So about 90% of the Old Testament's been removed and about 50% of the New Testament's been removed. Uh, to put it another way, a normal King James Version has 1,189 chapters in it. Uh, the Slave Bible has only 232. Missing are chapters and verses that might have encouraged uprisings. Book of Exodus, redacted. No story of Moses demanding Pharaoh, let my people go. Gone is Galatians, and the verse, There is neither bond nor free, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And no Jeremiah, woe unto him that useth his neighbor's service without wages. What they've left in are verses such as Ephesians 6, 5, which is the famous verse, Slaves, be obedient to your master. Looking at this Bible, it's hard to tell that anything's been taken out of it. That's correct. I mean, it looks like a normal book. For many enslaved Africans, this would have been the first time they were exposed to the Bible. A Bible selectively edited to instill obedience, using religion to underpin the horror of slavery. When people encounter this exhibit, what lasting impression do you want them to leave with? But well, we want to pass the message on that may this never happen again. Uh, the Bible itself is a, is a whole book. It's not one that you get to carve up and use this piece or that piece. The slave Bible designed to repress rebellion, but it didn't work. Enslaved people in the Caribbean constantly fought against slavery until emancipation. I think it's very relevant to understand our history. Not just American history, but our African-American history, our roots and how we got to this point. A dark chapter in the history of the good book. Jeff Bennett, NBC News, Washington. Missing are chapters and... Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, you know, and, and Jake, you still got that slave Bible mentality. Okay, you, you got the whole book in front of you. It's, it's, it's available on your cell phones. It's available in your stores. Man, you can get copies on copies, and you ain't even got to pay for it. But you niggas are so far gone because you're so much in rebellion. You ain't trying to, you ain't, you ain't trying to, you ain't trying to look in it. You don't think that it has your freedom in it. But that's because the Lord didn't give you the spirit. What then, Jake, what then, Israel have not, uh, have, what then, I'll get that. Um, yeah, oh, it's the spirit. I'm in that same chapter. Uh, Romans eleven and seven. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. You see, uh, in the NLT it says, "So this is the situation. Most of the people of Israel have not found the favor of the Most High. They are looking for so earnestly. A few have the ones the Most High has chosen, 
but the hearts of the rest will harden. You see that? And that's what that's what Jake is doing. You going around these different religions, you run into Christianity, Islam, you trying to find favor with the most high. But and, but you're not gonna find it. The only ones that's gonna have favor with the how about you shy is the elect of Israel. And the rest is what blinded. You see, he got these damn shades on his eyes looking like Stevie Wonder. This nigga's blind. You, you okay? He's spiritually blind. You know? This nigga is spiritually blind. Trying to he 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 trying to call himself some type of uh biblical scholar and no he knows nothing about the Bible, man. Yeah. That's how to read the Bible. To the mother big house, they want to read the Bible. Can you teach me how to read the Bible? Yeah. That's what the biggest mistake. Because without the Bible, they'd have been trying to get away. Yeah. Niggas was trying to get away with the Bible. And, and, and if they couldn't read, rebellion was a common thing. It wasn't, again, stop romanticizing slavery, man. You watching too many Roots movies, too many slave narratives that they come out, 12 years of slave. Man, it was a constant battle, man. But the spirit of the Lord had it to where them Edomites was going to overcome us no matter how much you revolted, man. Because you ain't going to rebel against his sword, man, which is Esau. You're not going to rebel against the sword. Okay? There was words in the Bible that said slavery was... Uh, suppose you this is part of exactly what you're supposed to be enslaved exactly so it, it, didn't, it didn't say that we were supposed to be enslaved it said that we would go into captivity but it also sees about it as going to deliver us from captivity so what are you talking about if if if, if, if you preaching this to me and i'm conceiving it even when they let me go i don't want to go well you niggas got uh you niggas got uh uh, 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 um, Stockholm syndrome, and this nigga talking about letting them go. Get out of America, nigga. You, you out of prison. You can get, you can get on a plane and go to another country that's ruled over by Edomites that speak another language, nigga. No matter where you go in this world, Esau gonna be ruling over your ass, man. The hell's wrong with you, man? Hey, Jake is stupid as shit, man. And that's why they're gonna get destroyed, man. <laughs> Jake is gonna get destroyed, and you Edomites, you going down too. Right along with the wicked of our people. This is the book of Jeremiah 44 and 16. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashanel Shai, we will not hearken unto thee. It says, uh, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, for then had we plenty of victuals and were and, and, and were well and saw no evil. But since we left to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by famine, right? Because that was the judgment for that idol worshiping, man. What you thought you, you were going to stop leaving it and everything was going to be cool? No, you still going to have to pay for that. You can repent, but you still have to pay for it. There may be mercy thrown in there, but you still have to pay for it. And Jake was like, no, we're just going to go back to idol worship because, look, we're getting all this good stuff. But those idols weren't giving you anything. It was really from the Lord, allowing you to, what, be destroyed in the end. It says, verse 19, and when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men and to the women, and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, The incense that ye burn in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, <clears throat> did not Yahweh Bashan al remember them? <clears throat> and it came not into his mind. So the Lord Yahweh Bashan al could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of your abominations which you have committed, therefore is your land des a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without inhabitants as at this day. Right, so back then, Jake was catching all that hell because that was a recompense for our wickedness. And that's what you don't understand. It's about taking responsibility. Okay, you can, you can point the finger all you want, but at the end of the day, what did you do? What are you doing? 
How are you trying to make right what's wrong? And Jake, see, Jake don't think that their wickedness is wickedness. They just think that they just living a life. You looking at these heathen nations and you envying them, you imitating them, but you don't know that you setting yourself up for failure, nigga. You ain't gonna win, and neither is these nations. So you Edomites that took the Bible and did what you wanted to it, this is for you. Uh, Psalms 15 and 16. But unto the wicked, the Lord I said, what is thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my word behind thee? When thou sawest a thief, and then, uh, then, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, thy tongue framest deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thy own mother's son. And that's what you, you Edomites did all of this, man. Here it is, you hate the instructions of the Lord. Just like two thirds of you Jakes, you hate, how you gonna talk about the Bible was the biggest mistake in human history, nigga? You don't even know human history. You have no, nigga, a nigga couldn't tell you what happened yesterday, man, let alone <laughs> hundreds of years ago, you know? But Esau hates instruction. Instruction in what? In righteousness. And he casts his word behind him. He casts the word of the Most High behind him. This is the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction and in righteousness, man. And Jake don't like instruction and in righteousness. Just like Esau don't like instruction and in righteousness. That's why these niggas is rebellious. That's why they, they in the condition that they in. But as the scripture says, Romans 3 and 1, what if, what if, I'm sorry, um, Romans 3 and 3, what, I saw that one, what advantage didn't have the Jew, or what profit is there in circumcision, much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High, for what if some did not believe, shall their unbelief make them make the faith of the Most High without effect, the Heavenly Father forbid, yea, let the Most High be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy same, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Right. So when Yahweh Shai comes and judges place, Lord willing, we're gonna overcome because we believe and have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right? But you niggas, you ain't gonna have no, you ain't gonna have nothing. You ain't looking for a savior because a savior ain't looking for you. You know? So, you know, I'm not gonna play no more of this, man. I was gonna go through, I actually went to the video and it, it, they cutting this dude up on a comment board, man. They cutting this dude all the way up. It says, when the Bible was written, was black people slaves in America? What race of people has never been slaves at some point? The ignorance being said <clears throat> to try to discredit the Bible is just asinine. <laughs> it is. And most times from people that don't have the Holy Spirit to rightfully discern the word. And you see, that's the Heavenly Father. That's Yahweh Hashem Shai's spirit. It's all over this YouTube, man. Because guess what? The truth is all over the YouTube. Starting from the apostles and the bishop elders of Great Millstone and the brothers on down. And those like-minded men that push the same spirit. So you niggas can't speak against the Bible like that no more. Because guess what? The truth is overcoming you. It says, if you're if you're going to quote the verse, um, quote it correctly. Slaves be subject to your masters with all reverence, not only to those who are good and equitable, but also to those who are perverse. What? What the Bible is saying is that if you are enslaved, you need to survive. In order to survive, you need to pl uh, placate to your enslaver. Absolutely. No different than getting pulled over by the racist cops. In order to survive, you need to cooperate with the racist cop until you can get out of that situation. The Bible, Paul actually condemns enslavers to the fullest extent. Go read the entire passage for yourself and stop listening to people that probably can't read themselves. It says the biggest mistake ever given to people who call themselves black is Christianity. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Because Christianity blinded you niggas. And we ain't black. For the last time, we are not black. Man, my skin is brown. My children's skin is brown. Different variations of it, man. My father and my mother's skin is brown. Man, I ain't black. Even my hair, it looks black, but guess what? It's it's brown. It's a dark brown. How about that? Make sure you keep that same energy when you meet the Most High. Tell him the Bible was a mistake. I know these niggas going to be crying. It says, say it again. Don't think they heard you back in, in the back. It also is almost temper. It says it's also the most temperate. At 44, I remember chapters of scriptures that help our bodies being removed, all of, all have been changed, welcome to confusion. Well, you can thank the white man for that. Just like when you go to the Apocrypha and it tells you right here, 
uh, viewing why is Baruch shown within the King James Bible, right? And it says, right, the Apocrypha is a selection of books which were published in the original 1611 King James Bible. These apocryphal books were positioned between the Old and the New Testament. It is also contained maps and genealogies. The Apocrypha was part of the KJV for 274 years until being removed in 1885. A portion of these books were called Deuteronical, Deuteronical books by some entities, such as the Catholic Church. Many claim the Apocrypha should never have been included in the first place, raising doubt about the validity, believing it was not of the Most High, not inspired, not the Most High inspired. For instance, in reference to magic, seems inconsistent with the rest of the Bible. Well, it doesn't talk about magic. The Lord had him do a ritual so that he could uh, purify his wife. We're talking about Tobit. It was Tobias that did it. it might have told me though. It says others believe it is valid and that it should never have been removed. That's right. It shouldn't. That is was that it was considered part of the Bible for nearly two thousand years before it was recently removed a little more than a hundred years ago. Exactly. Right. Some say it was removed because of not finding the books in the original Hebrew manuscripts. Others claim it wasn't removed by the church but by printers to cut the cost of distributing a Bible. No, it was just, it was taken out by a, a group called the Bible Destruction Group, man, who had always been trying to con, uh, conspire. Because guess what? It talks about people that actually lived in this world, from King from uh, uh, King Antiochus to, to, to um, Alexander the Creep, to Darius the Mede, to the Maccabees. All that stuff really happened. All right, and you niggas, you just don't understand it because it ain't given to you to understand. So your jailhouse, your jailhouse knowledge is not gonna beat the knowledge of the Most High. So that's what Dabson Shalawana on to the next.